First up is the body. Tell us the process. So essentially everything we've done here, I try to keep the two ops, front and back. Uh, we've got enough versatility in the machine that pretty much gets everything as long as you set it up right. Pretty much all the front features towards the front of the engine are all done from one side because they all time to each other. So you actually see with the, on the front face where it's got the three planetary gears, there's a, a reference hole which is about 10 degrees above one of them. Above that is piston number one. So that flat is actually horizontal where and the same line as the, the one, one of the planetary wheels. And essentially everything times from that in the engine. So as the build progresses and everything stacks on and everything goes more and more and more. So that has to do with the cam wheels that go on that push the push rods that have to do with the crank turning and the piston timing. Um, it all builds from that point. So the crank was the most, or the case, sorry, was the most important thing to sort of set right. I did all the features I could from one side, turned it around, uh, used the dial off that flat, which became the datum for the number one piston. So essentially it was, so we had a base plate to put all the parts onto. Yeah, and it, and it sets whether the whole thing's gonna work or not. Okay, let's move on to the cylinders. So yeah, so the cylinders and the heads, there was a fair bit of forgiveness in them. Essentially just had to marry up a bolt pattern that mounted onto the body. Uh, there is a cylinder liner that goes inside that's held captive by the head when it's bolted on. So I guess all of the tight tolerances were held in that. It was just a case of making what I think would work aesthetically hmm. from the drawing. So. There's a couple of certain radiuses I just sort of took some liberty on and then obviously grooves. Were there any issues that you ran into that you needed to solve 
with your master programming, might I say? Uh, not really. It was just adding tolerances from that point and what clearances I thought were applicable. Pistons. Pistons. Now, that were fun. As opposed to pissed offs. <laughs> <laughs> They're actually really cool. Um, I machined them with grooves in them so that I could put piston rings in them later if I wanted to. Okay, and the con rods, which stand for connecting rods. Connecting. I thought contemporary. Yeah, them I'm not settled on yet. Not really knowing anything about these engines before I started this, and not knowing they had a master rod. <laughs> I love it how you've just winged the entire thing. Oh, I just guessed. Yeah. Um, so yeah, not knowing that they actually ran with the master rod, but uh, a few people out there let me know they have one, and they're supposed to have one. So I got anything from, I'd say, abuse to um, quite technical answers of how, yeah. <laughs> how master rods work, uh, which I'm grateful for both. The crank, tell us about that and any issues that might have come up. Didn't use the tail stop. Yep. So it just ran second passes. So essentially there's two bearing journals, a keyway for, that sort of times it um, with the planetary gears and then a thread on the end for the nose cone that holds a prop on there. Something that I thought that was pretty cool was the uh, valve assembly. Valve assembly was quite easy. Uh, it was just three components. It was uh, essentially like the guide and the body and the seat for the valve was like a, a press-in mm. insert that went into the head. Uh, then obviously the valve pops through it. Uh, then a spring and then you've got like a little seat which sits against the top of the spring. That sat there and then it's just got a little circlet retaining it at the top, which has got a groove on the back of the valve. Push rods. Essentially just turning a ball on each end with the five mil shaft in between. I machined it out of 19 mil, done in two stages. Yeah. That way I wouldn't get too much deflection and I could maintain size and that way I could get reasonably good blends. Years. Did them with a single point thread milling tool. Symmetric one, so 60 degrees. I did that in a live tool holder, pointing out in the X direction. And then I used the Y axis to actually come off center, step up, come across to the center of the 90 degrees. And then it essentially just uh, milled its way through to cut the V and then index the C axis and then rinse and repeat until you've got your gear profile. Cam wheels. Cam wheels, so... No, wheels. Wheels. Uh, essentially, it was just setting a milling profile with the mm. live tooling. I followed the dimensions that Wolfgang put in there as close as I could, as far as setting duration and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Because, obviously, they determine how long valves are open and valves are closed. When valves open and close, it sets the timing for the engine. So, oh, interesting. Um, essentially two pieces that screw together one of which has a uh, internal spline pattern which gives it the the rack side of a rack and pinion setup cam housing again it was a two-up part um really pretty yes i like it mm. um 
essentially that's one that you're timing everything. The holes through the side are parallel to the center, but not on center. And they're also offset to interact with the two cam wheels. So for one for inlet, one for exhaust. Um, and then they obviously line up with the seven hole pattern that it bolts to the front of the crankcase with. And the timing of those is important because it means that when you put it all together, where the lifters pop out, is going to line up with the push rods that line up with the rockers. Mm. So yeah, it was just sort of important getting all that relative to each other. Yeah. So next, next time, time on Stitched Up, Carby, plugs, pipes, prop, and nose cone. We just loved doing this and people responded and now we have to make a video all of a sudden. Feel free to uh, to, to like and subscribe guys. I know it sounds like a bit of a grab, but I guess it keeps no, I was literally going to bait you into that. <laughs> it's, uh, this is something I know definitely I do. I, I do it for passion and I enjoy it. Mm. And it's interesting to be able to share it and just to to see the positivity and see the interest it generates. Yeah, swing us any comments in uh, in the in the YouTube's comment section, and uh, we will answer them as we go. He answers every question surprisingly. Let's try and do that for like uh, the first bit. See how many comments we can actually answer. Yeah. If it does go insane, it could be like ten. Who knows? But if it's like I don't know, hundred thousand, you got your work cut out for you. Because I can't answer the technical questions. And I think as well, like if you have suggestions, because I'm, I'm not so much a creative type. It's me. If there's something you want to see or something yeah. you'd like to see, like I'm more than open to suggestions. I'm, I'm going to have you building some shit you should never build. <laughs> Within reason, like yeah. I don't want to build anything that's dangerous or classed as a weapon. Because Yeah, we can't. We're in Australia, you know. <laughs> like, straight to jail. Like and subscribe, guys. God, that's the cringiest thing ever.